pleasure of reading Dr. Selber's article on making robotic surgery work in practice. As noted by the authors, robotic surgery has expanded to include many fields such as urology, head and neck, colorectal, and bariatric surgery. The authors of this paper aim to provide an overview of robotic surgery and plastic surgery. The authors start with a brief introduction on the Da Vinci robot, describe the robotic operating team, and describe the clinical applications available. The three indications described include TORS, or transoral robotic reconstructive surgery and head and neck surgery, robotic muscle harvest, primarily of the latissimus dorsi and rectus abdominis muscle, and robotic micronastomoses for microlymphatic surgery in detail. The authors described barriers to entry, costs, training pathway, regulatory environment, and institutional inertia. The limits of robotic surgery will continue to be defined. Perhaps the field that has the most data on robotic surgery is urology. As we have seen in robotic prostate surgery, reports have detailed less blood loss but not improved functional outcomes. The urologists have seen a reduction in post out of pain, blood transfusions, and length of stay. Perhaps a driving factor for robotic surgery, generally speaking, is primarily patient demand. Data for robotic plastic surgical procedures is likely forthcoming. For instance, the posterior pharyngeal space is extremely limited and a potential application of robotic surgery. Speaking from personal experience, I can certainly attest to the degree of neck strain one has when inserting a flap in the back of the mouth, especially when the jaw has not been divided for access. Dr. Selber has provided honest information on this emerging technology and has noted that only a handful of plastic surgeons around the world have been performing robotic surgery. On a technical note, at this point, there is no haptic or sensory input from the sensory field to the remote console, and so maneuvering instruments is simply through visualization of what is happening on the screen. But this may change in the future. Microlymphatic surgery is an area that requires above average fine human movement, potentially when sewing very fragile lymphatic vessels, which lends itself to robotic surgery. Interestingly, the authors note that the intuitive company resists training plastic surgeons due to the lack of FDA approved indications for the robot. In addition, there is no modifier or CPT code associated with the use of the robot. I found this manuscript to be very informative and honest on the challenges of having a robotic surgery practice in plastic surgery. I would speculate that in the future, with decreasing costs of instrumentation and improved visualization through new applications such as augmented or virtual reality, that we may see robotic surgery in plastic surgery become more popular.